Hey, it's Eric from Prestige, and today I want to talk a little bit about electric fan selection. Uh, first of all, when selecting an electric fan, you need to know what's called the core size. What you're concerned with is the area in between the two tanks, which is referred to as the core size. So you'll want to take a width and a height me measurement. You want your electric fans to cover as much of that core area as possible. Second is there's two types of electric fans. There's pushers and there's pullers. Pullers are more efficient than pushers, so especially if this is your primary cooling fans, you definitely want to try and get a puller fan. One thing you need to note, however, is clearance between the radiator and the pulleys on the front of the engine. So that's going to determine uh, how much room you have, whether or not you're going to be able to use a puller fan. Third is whether or not to use a shroud. <clears throat> Now we always recommend using a shroud. And what a shroud does is it allows the fan to pull air across the entire core area of the radiator. Without a shroud, you're only pulling air through at the diameter of the fan. There are several types of, of shrouds available as well. So you can see this one, for instance, actually has louvers in the shroud. And what that does is when you're driving down the highway, as air is passing through the radiator, these louvers basically take away some of that air resistance and lets air pass through. The only issue with that is when you're sitting in traffic at idle, it actually draws air through the louvers and back through the fan rather than through the front of the radiator and through the fan area. So the louvers are, are good, but if you're gonna do a lot of uh, sitting in traffic, a lot of street driving, you may wanna consider another type of shroud that's available from Spall, which actually has rubber flaps where these louvers would typically go. And what that does is as you're driving down the highway, those rubber flaps will actually open up and allow air to pass through. If you're in traffic in an idle situation and the fans kick on, it actually sucks the rubber flaps closed and allows the fan to draw air all the way through the entire area of the radiator core, just like a, a solid shroud would do. I want to talk a little bit about fan ratings. The most common fan rating or specification that you're going to see is CFM. And that is basically a measurement of how much air the fan can move, measured in cubic feet per minute. A fan with a high CFM rating can move a lot of air, as long as there's nothing in its way. There's another spec that's a lot less common to see, which is static pressure. And static pressure is just the resistance to airflow. Manufacturers like Spall actually give us tables that show the amount of static pressure and the CFM rating at that static pressure. You can see as the static pressure increases, the CFM or the amount of air the fan can move actually decreases. Also, the amperage rating of the motor goes up. So an important thing to look at when you're trying to select a fan, if the manufacturer isn't giving you a static pressure for the CFM rating, another thing you can look at is how many amps does that electric motor draw? The higher the amp rating, you can bet that the more static pressure that fan can handle without losing a significant amount of CFM or airflow. So to recap our discussion today, number one, Measure the core size of your radiator to figure out what size of fan you can use. Number two, select whether you're going to use a puller or a pusher fan. Number three, make sure you're using a shroud. And depending on how much street driving you're going to be using, doing, uh, make sure you select the correct type of shroud. And then lastly, the fan CFM and static pressure ratings. Make sure that you get a fan that has a high CFM uh, for these type of engines, at least 3,000 CFM or higher. And also pay attention to the static pressure specification if it's available. If not, look at the amperage rating of the electric motor. The higher the better. We recommend at least a 30 amp fan. And if you follow all of those steps, uh, you shouldn't have any issues with an electric fan cooling your new ride. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about cooling fans or anything else related, feel free to give us a call 
7170 or visit our website at prestigemoto.com. For tech tips, dyno results, information on new product testing, and vehicle project coverage, sign up for our weekly newsletter at prestigemoto.com.